Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands to Jesus and say to him, Lord, come down with your mercy. Let us once more again lift our hands to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I welcome you to God's presence, this service is the service of divine mercy. Today is a covenant day of mercy. I want to show you the secret to the heart of God. The secret to the act of God. If you can get to the heart of God in any given situation, then you are on your way to your miracle. And what is the miracle? This month is our month of a glorious visitation. Latter end supernatural visitation. And I want to recap the agenda and the purpose of God again for us this month. From the Kariah chapter 1 verse 7 down to 17. Upon the 11th month came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah the prophet. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 7. This microphone is breaking again. Thus said the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 16. Thus said the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. 
My house shall be built in it, said the Lord of hosts. And the line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Verse 17. Thus said the Lord of hosts, my cities, true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet convert Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Verse 16. I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. And when I return to you with mercies, I shall return with prosperity that we announce you at this latter end of the year. However, as God has promised a return with divine mercy. God asked me to tell you that this mercy has condition. This mercy has condition. Number one condition is it's going to return with prosperity. It's going to return with what? Prosperity. prosperity. Number two condition is that this mercy is not for everybody. I'm so, I was so surprised when the Lord asked me to tell you and everybody in the house that this mercy is not for everybody. And at the same time, this mercy is for everybody. Can you understand the difference between that? This mercy is not for everybody. Yet, this mercy is for everyone. Not for everybody, but is for everyone everyone can you make sense out of it and I asked God Lord why he says son have I not spoken in my word in Romans chapter 9 verse 15 for I we have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Ah. God said, my son, <laughs> I am God of mercy. This mercy is not for everybody, but is for someone. That's what it, where I'm going. It's not for everybody but it's for someone so if everyone plug into it then it will be for everybody I will have mercy on whom on what whom I chose to have mercy on whom I chose or I chosen and going back to Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 he said it clearly he said thus said the Lord of hosts my city through prosperity shall yet be spread about, abroad and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion I want you to see the last part he said and shall yet chosen or say yet chose or say yet choosing or say yet chose Jerusalem did you see the last word there and say yet choosing or chosen or choose Jerusalem Jerusalem and Romans 15 Romans 9 15 confirm it 
I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. On the person that I chose, I will have mercy. And I ask God, God, why is this mercy not for everybody? Why? And he told me, he said, my mercy is for everybody but for someone. I said, and who are those that not there? He said, except for the sons of perdition. Ah, sons of perdition. We are in a long conversation. I was in a long conversation with God. I said, God, you need to show me why this message is not for everybody, but for some people, for someone. Hosea chapter 2, verse 23 B, he opened my eyes there. He said, And my son, I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, Which were not my people, thou are my people. And they shall say, Thou are my God. I said, God, what is all this ritual you are showing me? He said, Son, I will have mercy on those that know me. As their God. I said, but sir, everybody are here in the, uh, in the house of the Lord. He said, but everybody are in the house of the Lord, but not everybody know me as their Lord. He said, so many come to my house of the Lord as onlooker. They come to look at dresses. They come to gossip. They come to talk. Yeah, yeah. They are not here for me. He said, I will not have mercy on those people because they are sons and daughters of petition. Ah, then I became frightened. I said, oh God, then how can we have, because we need your mercy. Because when you return with mercy, it carries prosperity. I said, people are suffering. At the later end of the year, this is the time we need you, oh God. He said, then enter into the covenant of mercy when i see my covenant i am obliged i am forced to visit them i said is that all we need to enter into the covenant he said i cannot visit them that are not in my covenant <sighs> god another read you what are you talking about he said, bring my people together. Let them enter into a covenant. My covenant will I not annul. I cannot ignore them that are covered by my covenant. I said, how can we then? What is the assurance, O God, that after this, he said, son, have I not told you? Hosea chapter 9 verse 7. The days of visitation are come. Israel shall know it. He said, you shall see it. Jeremiah 50, 31, for that day is come, the time that I will visit thee. Have I not told you that this is the month of supernatural visitation? That days shall come. You shall see it. In the time that I will visit thee. Ah, I became perplexed. Oh God, now tell me what should I tell your people? Are these people seated here will be visited? <laughs> he said they are to choose whether they will be visited or not. I said, what about me? Oh God, am I going to be visited? He said, my son, even you you are to determine your faith, whether you will be visited or you will not. Oh God, I want to be visited. I want to be visited. I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. Oshia chapter 2 verse 23b. 
And now we say to them, which you are not my people, thou art my people. And thou shalt say, and they shall say, thou art my God. <sighs> you see, I began to ponder on this. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And then I will have mercy upon her. What, what is special about her? That was the question I asked God. I said, God, what is special about this woman? Because you said, I will have mercy upon those who I will have mercy. And now you took me to this. I will have mercy upon her that I will not obtain mercy. What is special about this woman that make other not to be visited? <laughs> he said, son, let's go into the journey. And I was going into him with the journey. Looked up. Oh, verse 25 to 46. We we'll read some scripture there and then <laughs> we, we enter into the covenant. I want to tell you if you can touch the heart of God. I want to take us to journey to touch the heart of God that provoke mercy. Covenant day of mercies. Luke chapter 4, verse 25, down to 46. 25 says, But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. Verse 26. But, say, but. Say again, but unto none of them was Elias sent except unto Sarafat, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Oh. I will have mercy upon her. Oshia 23. And I ask God, who is this woman? That you had mercy. Because I want to enjoy the same mercy. If there is a criteria for people to enjoy mercy. I saw a woman that enjoyed mercy. I want to enjoy the same mercy. And God said, you want to know the criteria for my mercy. Let's go to this journey. And then she, he took me to this journey of the woman of Seraphat. A widow. Hey! He says, I said, sir, sir, a widow. What do you mean by a widow? He said, no, before you go for that, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. <laughs> look, and then he says, son, look. Verse 27. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisos, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed except Nehemiah, the Syrian. God was speaking to him in He said, among all the widows, I visited only one. I said, what is special about that woman? As I was saying that, he said, what is special about Neymar? I was asking about that woman. And I said, if you visited that woman alone, what about the man? What about the man? He said, my son, I chose also the man to be visited. I chose the woman to be visited. And then he showed me Neymar. He said, can't you see? Among all the lepers, I chose Nehemiah to be visited. What is special about Nehemiah? What is special about the widow of Sarafat? Mercy of the Lord prevailed upon the, the woman of Sarafat, the widow. And I want us to quickly look at the visitations of the widow and we enter into the covenant 
of that same visitation. First Kings 17 verse 8. Let's go and examine the widow's mercy. Let's go and visit that woman. I want us to take a journey to the city of Sarafa this morning. I want us to take a city to the city of Sarafa this morning. And when we get to the city of Sarafat, we will sit down there and then we say, Oh God, if this is what makes you to visit this woman, now it is my turn to be visited. Let's go to the city of Sarafat. How many of you are ready to go with me to that city? You want to go with me? Now let's go on to the journey. First Kings 17 verse 8. Down the line, I read quickly and then we ask the Lord to visit us with his mercy. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah, saying, Arise, verse 9, get thee to Sarafat, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Sarafat, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little hole in the cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Verse 13, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me. Verse 14, for thus said the Lord God of history, the barrel of me shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fade, until the day that the Lord sent the rain upon the head. And, verse 15, as she went and did, according to the saying of Elijah, and, she, and he and her house did hit many days, and the barrel of me wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fade, according to the word of the Lord, which is speak by Elijah. What is this month? What is the prophetic, prophetic focus for this month? What is, what is God's agenda for us this month? What? Say it loud. And I, want somebody to, I want somebody to say, this is my month of visitation. This is my month of supernatural visitation. What does that mean? There is going to be visitations that are not natural. There is what? Going to be visitation of heaven on earth which is not natural. There is going to be super that is above normal. In our life, in your life. And God began to show me the life of this woman all the, all the way to the city of Sarafat. The supernatural visitation. Under the normal circumstances, there was a farmer. The farmer which was natural. There was a natural situation in the city. There was lack and want in the city. But the supernatural visitation took over the natural event. Because God has mercy on one person living under the natural situation. The God of mercy prevail over the natural 
It's obvious the natural circumstances. And we have mercy on whom I will have. And when I choose the person to have mercy, I will visit them. And he chooses the widow of Sarapha with his mercy. And the mercies follow the prosperity. With my prosperity, will I yet visit Jerusalem? So when he visited the mother, the woman, the, the widow of Sarafat, he visited her with mercy and with prosperity. Ah! Who is a widow? A widow is a man or a woman with no help. A widow is a man or a woman or a widower with no help, no supporter, no helper. Are you getting me? A widow is not a minonia. A widow, a widower is a man and a woman crying for solution lonely in their own place a woman or a widow or a widower is someone crying in his or a state of loneliness rejection crying and weeping god said this are the people I want to visit. I am not after the man or the woman that is stinkly rich with proudness. Amen. I am not after the proud nation. I am after the humble nation. I am not for people that think they know everything. They were everything. And they can do and undo. I am not for people who can judge. Who can judge? They can judge you. They can condemn you. My mercy is not just for the waste. I will choose whom I I, have, I choose not I have mercy because when my mercy come it come with prosperity it come with announcement even if you are a minonier if you are not humbling yourself he said I have no mercy for you because with your minonia, with your riches you have no mercy for the poor how can I have mercy for you I am after the widow, the widower, the man that is living in a state of nothing now, the woman that is living in the state of nothing, looking unto the heaven for help. I am after those ones. My mercy is after them. My mercy is after them. Look at this woman. <laughs> Hear me. God said, I'm going to visit you at this latter end of the year. The widow woman was going to the latter end of a year. If you understand the storyline, the woman was going for her last meal. Are you getting me? She was going for her last meal. And after that meal, she was going for a suicide mission. She was going for what? Suicide mission. Can you understand the situation of this woman? She was a widow. Or she's a widow. She said, you are a widower. Yet, living in a dry land. Where there is no more hope. 
where you have been told there is no hope there is no solution at the latter end of this year can't you see you hear the testimony of my daughter the latter end of the year when people are saying there is no job God of visitation show up for her I am after that brother that sister that is in the last stage the last stage of is or a hope I am speaking to that brother sister that is in the last stage of our hope now. You are the widow. You are a widower. Mm. Elijah said unto her, Fear not. I am saying to you, Fear not. Are you going through your own last me of shame now? Are you going through your last me of giving up? This woman was going through the stage of giving up. He was going through the stage of submission. Her last hand has come. She has come to the conclusion. Let me just die. widow widower no epa no supporter children to feed house rent to pay bond to pay how can i survive this the latter age of depression god said to me so my heart is after those that are in their latter stage of depression sorrow weeping for visitation i will have mercy on whom i have mercy I prophesy to your life, people of God. You see, when the visitation of the Lord come, you don't struggle for it. It is a supernatural visitation that, uh, that is above natural. Every supernatural visitation look for you. You don't look for it. <laughs> Can you see what happened? She was going for her last meal. In the midst of a situation, the miracle visited her. She was not looking for the miracle. The miracle look for her. Stop looking for the miracle. So many sons and daughters are busy sampling churches looking for the miracle. Whereas, miracle should be looking for them. Why they are busy looking for miracle? The miracle came to where they were, but they were not there. Sons and daughter, please beware looking for miracle. Looking from one church to another church, from one church to another church, from one prophet. Beware. Because the day you shifted your position, to look for the miracle the miracle was already coming to visit you 
where you are going you have missed it because they cannot be patient they cannot be patient looking for the miracle and God say I am visiting you come on sit down in your house let him meet you if it is God supernatural visitation he will visit you he will meet you where you are he will what? he will meet you this woman did not look for the prophet the prophet went to her the visitation of the, of the Lord went to her See, the, the prophet said to her woman come Fear not. Do you know what I see? This week, this week, even if you are traveling by train, someone seated by you is positioned as an angel to change your destiny. Even when you are buying and you are on a queue, when you are on a taxi, when you are fetching water, an angel of the Lord will visit you. Will visit you. Will visit you. It has happened to me many times. Be on a queue to pay and you meet your sons or your daughter even buying above what you want to pay and then you say no 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 leave it you pay for it visitation of god visitation of god visitation of god visitation of god i prophesy to your life in this latter end of the year Whatever you have been looking for since the beginning of the year, we locate you, we find you, we locate you, we find you, we locate you, we find you, we locate you, we find you. Whatever you have been looking for, we locate you, we find you. This woman have not done anything. Can you see the mercy? Can you see the mercy? This woman has not done anything. This woman is in her last stage of hopelessness. She's in her last stage of hopelessness. She's in her last stage of suicide mission. She's in her last stage of giving up. She's in her last stage of committing suicide. She's in her last stage of giving up. But supernatural visitation located her. Supernatural look, visitation located her. It is my prayer that today 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 the angels of the lord in the form of men and women will look at you we look at you oh come and give the lord a clap of it take your seat see he said bring me i pray thee Bring me. Bring me. I pray thee. What do you have? For your own visitation. What do you have? To provoke your visitation. Bring me, I pray thee. Awful time we think that until I give my financial or until I give substance in finances or in money is what the Lord needs. God does not need your money.
God does not need your money. You need God with your money. God does not need your money, but you need God with your money. God requires of only one thing in your life and in my life. God does not require your money. It is you that need God with your money. You need to see God. Your, 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 your money in your hand is your key to see him. But for him to see you, you need something. He needs something from you. He needs something. Only one thing he needs from you. For him to see you. For him to visit you. For you to visit him, to see him. You use your finances as your gateway, as your key access. But for him, he doesn't need your money. He needs only one thing, to visit you. Because he's visiting me, he's visiting us with his mercy. And I cannot afford not to invite him. For God, you need to invite him. For God, you need to invite him. With one thing. When he sees that thing, he automatically runs onto you. He will have mercy on you. What is that thing? What is in your hand to give him? What is in your heart to give him? We bring a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord of the Lord. We bring a sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord as we offer and we offer unto thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer unto thee the sacrifices of praise we bring we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord we bring the sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord and we offer unto thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer unto you the sacrifices of praise today I want you to provoke that divine mercy on you, please take your seat by inviting him again. Lord, have mercy upon me. That's what God wants. And he said, give me the access to have mercy on you. Leave your proudness nature. Leave your arrogance nature. Surrender yourself to me. And I will visit you with my mercy. Rise upon your feet, everybody now. Psalm 30 verse 4. Sing unto the Lord. Can we read together? Psalm 30 verse 4 to 5. Can we read together? 1, 2, 3. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Verse 5. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure.
Are you reading it? Let's read it with life now, please. One, two, three. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The widow of Sarafat weeping. Endure for the night. But in the morning, joy and a joy commit via the visitation of the Holy Ghost. I am saying to you, people of God, your weeping of January up to yesterday night is enough. Your joy comet this morning. Your joy comet this morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comet in the morning. But joy comet in the morning. Weeping may endure, but joy comes. And it is the joy of the Lord, it is via the joy of the Lord that you can draw from the way of visitation. I want us to go into covenant. Take up your paper, your covenant visitation. I want you to enter into your own covenant of visitation today. I want us to enter into the covenant, please, elders, of visitation right now. God said, this is our latter hand of visitation. And I've been asking God, Lord, how can we be visited? He said, let the people enter into a covenant with me. The widow of Sarafat. Enjoy the fine visitation because it's a covenant from heaven that upon my widows I will visit. I like us to remind God why we should be visited. So we are going to read together the paper in your hand from the beginning to the end. I start the visitation. Read it in your book. Say it. The visitation. Say it again. Now go to the second line. Who trusted that the lost words to him will be fulfilled. Now the next line. I want you to wait there. Please, the, 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 the youth, you don't have paper? Why one person is sharing? God promised us that this is our year of supernatural visitation. Listen to where we are going. God said this is our year of supernatural visitation. And now we are going towards the end of the year. God said this is our year of latter end supernatural visitation now we need to remind him that's what we are taking now now the heading again my year of supernatural harvest what is the false covenant you want to enter to this morning first covenant one two three Yes, because the Lord blesses the latter end of Job more than his beginning. I am blessed this latter end of 2014. 
my supernatural harvest is today in Jesus' name. Covenant number one. Covenant number two. One, two, three. Zechariah chapter one, verse seven and verse 17. Upon the eleventh month came the word of the Lord unto Pastor Tau, the Wami prophet, saying, Thus said the Lord, I am returned to Wami with mercies. My house shall be built in it, said the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Wami. Thus said the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Wami, and shall yet visit me with my supernatural harvest. In this 2014, in Jesus' name. Covenant number three. One, two, three. Zechariah chapter one, verse one. Ten, verse one. As ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright cloud and give showers of rain to every one grass in the feet. Therefore, I declare my supernatural harvest visitation with showers of blessing in these remaining weeks of the year. I decree and declare that the next remaining week, this to 31st December 2014, as my appointed weeks and days of harvest in Jesus' name. According to Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 24, let us now fear the Lord our God that give a rain, both the former and latter. In this season, he reserved unto me the appointed weeks of the harvest. So shall it be in Jesus' name. I am an altar of God. As you have had the covenant paper in your hand, make it your daily reminder. Morning and night. Read it to heaven. Why must I be visited with mercy? Lord, it is your covenant in the beginning of the year that you will visit me. That you will visit us. How can I be visited? How can I be visited? Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. What is the remembrance of his holiness? The remembrance of the covenant. Lord, remember your covenant. Finally, the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 9. Daniel, chapter 9, verse 18. Oh my God, incline thy ear and hear. Open thy eyes and behold our desolation. And the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplication before thee. For our righteousness. But for thy great mercy. Great is thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. You. At this moment now, I need you. At this moment, I need you. Have mercy upon me. 
I surrender everything unto you. Take over from me. The journey is no longer my ability. Lord, take over this journey from me. Lord, only you can do for me what I cannot do for myself. But I know one thing you cannot do for yourself. I need your mercy. You need my praise. I give to you my worship. You give to me your mercy. Simple. I give to you the praise, the worship of my lips in my surrender next to you so that you can give me and visit me with your mercy. That's where I am now. I surrender my own ability. I surrender my own power. I surrender my own beauty. I surrender my own heart to you now. That you may visit me with your mercy. Is that who you are? Is that what you are saying? If that is the case, I leave you with God of mercy. As you are worshipping him, he will have mercy on those that he will have mercy not on everybody but on someone who surrender his or herself at this moment the altar of surrenderness is the altars of worship the altars of worship is the altar of surrenderness the altars of praise is the altar of surrenderness I surrender everything unto you not in my ability not in my capacity anymore but your mercy oh god lord this is me take over from me let's worship him and as you are worshiping him let him see them let him see let god see your humility for this mercy and then your story will be a new order of the widow of Sarafat. Give the Lord a clap of prayer. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands to Jesus and say to him, Lord, come down with your mercy. Let us once more again lift our hands to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your mercy. 